So, I got a comment recently on um, my last video that I posted last night. And it said, you should do a 5 to 10 minute um, review on Christian music that is coming out or has come out. And I thought that was a great idea, but I'm not only just going to review it. I'm going to explain the biblical truth behind each song. <clears throat> so first off, the song Reckless Love. We all know, or most people, know the song Reckless Love. If you're a Christian, you probably know it because it's on every Christian radio station. So, basically, what this song is saying it says the overflowing, never-ending, reckless love of God. Now we think, why? How can God's love be reckless? Okay. Well, it is reckless like a forest fire. Okay. A forest fire consumes everything, just like the love of God. And then the overwhelming. When we get into a place where we are with God we then start to feel this overwhelming feeling of the purest of love that anyone could ever feel in their entire lives. Now, it says that he leaves the 99 to get the one. There is a parable in scripture where a shepherd had a hundred sheep in his flock and one left and got lost. He left those 99 sheep to get that one because the thing is that God will never stop pursuing a relationship with you. Even when you run from him, he will chase after you because of the love that he has for you. Now, of course, there are those times where we feel like God is distant, but that does not mean that he is distant. We just don't have, we are just numb to that feeling because of life. But he will do everything in his power, and he can do anything, to make you, to help you understand the fullness of his love and the fullness of who he really is. And that's what that song is about, is, the, is how God will always pursue us, even when we run away from him. Secondly, um, the second song that I want to talk about was um, Define Me by Johnny Diaz. And this song isn't as well-known as Reckless Love, but this song, it says, um, it says the devil is not, um, he doesn't have a pitchfork, he doesn't have a tail, he comes to guys his fear and lies to remind us when we failed. And it kind of shows that, like, he, we're not going to know right away when the devil is around, because he doesn't come as we perceive him to be. We think that he's this big, red, burnt-up monster with a tail, a pitchfork, and like a suit, and then like a black suit with a tire, whatever, I don't know. People have different variations of what they think Satan looks like, but that's a video for a totally different day. Um, so what we're talking about is basically the devil is not who we think he is. He will make himself look so beautiful, so gorgeous, so um, intimidating that we will want to grab it and hold it close. It's kind of like in movies where they have witchcraft and sorcery. It makes it it makes us think that this stuff is so cool, so interesting that we want to get involved in it. But that's not the case. The thing is that he takes that to make it look good, but in the reality, it's evil. A Ouija board, uh, books on with spells and trying to communicate with demons. It's it's communicating with ghosts. They're all demons. They're not ghosts. They're demons. They'll say that they're nice ghosts, but there's no such thing as a nice demon. That's why they're demons, not ghosts. But, like I was saying, um, he comes and he shows things as beauty um, to make us think that what can be wrong with it if it is truly beautiful? But it's not beautiful. It's evil. And says, look that devil straight in the eyes in the eye and say, Devil, I'm tired of your lies. You don't define me. Because all of your power has been swept away. Your threats are as empty as Jesus' grave. 
devil, go get behind me because you don't define me. And that's what it is. The devil will come in and speak lies into your ear and come up like right here and say that you're not worthy, that you're not loved, that you're not enough that you need to submit to his power to have a healthy and happy life. But that is not the truth. Leading, uh, having Satan lead you into a way that is corrupt and is evil is one of the most terrible things. Not terrible. One, one of the things that are going to lead you down the road of unrighteousness. Because he doesn't go for people who are weak. Because it's too easy. He saves them for later. He goes towards people who are strong. That he knows it's going to take time and effort. But we need to stay strong as Christians and remind Satan through scripture that we are children of God. And that we are not going to submit to his power. That we will not submit to what he says he has. He doesn't have power when it comes to Christ. When you say leave in the name of Jesus, he has to, to, to listen to you. He can't say no, because guess what? He is subject to his authority. One more song I'm going to go, I'm going to talk about is the song, um, When God Ran. It kind of talks about the prodigal son, and it also talks about who we are to Christ. So in the prodigal son, the son, um, this guy has two sons, and one son goes off and takes uh, his inheritance, goes to his dad and said, look, if you were to die right now, what would my inheritance be? And his father told him, he said, okay, I want it now. His father uh, was not okay with it, but his dad said, okay, fine. Um, gave him his inheritance, he left. He spent it all, and then... <clears throat> After he spent all of it, he then got a job and he was eating pig slob, like what, what pigs ate. Um, and he said, there are people who live with my father who eat better than I do, that eat great, that eat better than this. So I'm going to go and see if I can work for my father. He goes back to his father. His father sees him and is happy to see him and goes over and just wraps him up in his arms. And that is kind of what who God is he's, he's a father and when we leave our father it breaks his heart because he worked so hard to have that relationship with us and even when we decide that we're going to walk away he says no I'm going to pursue you until you come back to me because all I want is that relationship with my child, with you. I want us to have that relationship. I want you to be my child. I don't want you to leave home. I don't want you to run away. I want you to come and run into my arms again and be my love because I am your first love and you are my first love. I create you in your mother's womb. So he says, even when we run away, even when we make terrible decisions, even when we turn our backs on God, he is always there in the midst of every single storm. So if I had to rate each song as go from one to ten with the biblical, like biblical message wise, I'd give them all ten. If I had to give them each a song sound wise, I'd have to give Reckless Love an eight. Johnny Diaz song um, Define Me a nine. And when God ran, that be a seven. Actually, no, define me as a ten. Reckless love is eight. Um, define me as a ten, and then when God ran, that is a seven, based on sound. Um, again, they're all biblically very accurate. Um, and those are three songs. I'm gonna do this more often. Uh, they will not always be new songs that have just come out. There'll be songs that I personally listen to because that's just how I, you know, work with uh, Christian music is I just stumble upon it. It could be like five years old. I've never heard it. And I just hear it. And it's new to me. So it must be new to someone. Um, so that's what that is. And I hope you guys listen to these songs and let me know what you think in the comment section below. So leave a thumbs up and comment your favorite Christian song. 
And if you don't like Christian music, then comment your favorite scripture in the comments below. I hope you guys had a great day. Stay pure.